Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the video. Today, we're going to talk about masking. Very important part of your paint job on your car, even detailing, doing other stuff. It is good to know how to mask things off so we don't get crap where we don't want it on a, on a car, inside your house, wherever. Masking is an important part of the game. So, get ready. We're going to take this 35 that we've sanded and worked on in previous videos, and we're going to take this thing and we're going to mask up the doors, we're going to mask up the windows, um, mask off and cover up this front end of it here so that uh, no overspray gets on anything. We'll end up with it masked down to the floor and all that. So it's kind of the very important part of painting right along with sanding and blocking and all those things. Masking is equally as important. So let's get into it. All right, so we got our materials here. I've got just a roll around bench to throw some tape and different stuff on. I ought to have a razor blade laying on here um, to cut stuff. I have a solvent born aerosol type cleaner Wax and grease remover, prep saw, that's what that's taking the place of. Then I just have some regular old gl glass cleaner. Um, it seems to work pretty good. I see a lot of guys using it. So um, yeah, as long as you have something that does not leave a film when you're done, you're gonna be okay there. You could even use uh, just alcohol on a rag and wipe stuff down with that. You want something that dries clean, that's the main thing. Then we have some tape, just automotive grade masking tape. Don't go down to the Dollar General and buy the cheapest stuff you can. I got an uh, inch and a half, three quarter inch. You'll even see me use some two inch um, later on. I do always keep like a gray Scotch-Brite pad or something equivalent to that. This should be equal to five to 600 grit. I keep this with me just so I can scuff all the edges and different stuff because uh, I didn't do that while I was sanding the outside of the car. They have to have a scratch so that even our overspray will stick. And I bought this foam tape here. It's nice to use inside of door jams. Kind of gives you a little picture on the back. It's made by J Tape. Uh, I've used their products before and they seem to make pretty good stuff. And it was quite a bit cheaper than buying the name brand 3M product. But you can see it's just round this is 13 millimeter half inch whatever you want to call it it has glue on the back side so when you put it on something it'll stick and then the paint doesn't have a hard edge there it's going to have a soft edge because it's rolling around there only thing i know about this you got to be kind of careful and not get that tape lined up where paint's going to hit the tape or you have a hard line anyway so we got that then i have a little masking machine here I just keep 18-inch uh, paper on it and 6-inch paper. And these things are really nice because you pull it off, tear it. You got your paper with tape on it already. Um, takes some fiddling to get everything lined up and working on them. You can buy one of those probably for about $120. If you were going to do a lot of painting, it would be a good thing to have. If you're not going to do a lot of painting, crap, you can lay the paper down the side of the car, stick tape on it do whatever. Um, see a lot of guys use newspaper and all kinds of stuff to mask with. A roll of masking paper is about 16 bucks and it doesn't have all that lint on it. So that's the reasoning behind that. I do want to use good lint-free towels when I'm washing and cleaning everything. We, we want to be taking dirt away, not adding it to our project that we're working on. So, so I took a towel, little cleaner, cleaned off around this flange here. And then we just back taped. So we basically have, oh, sorry about that. Tape sticking to the back here. And then we've left some sticky showing. Common thing to do. Most of you already know this. I just wanna make sure that everybody's got all the information. So we're gonna put that in there. I'm gonna put a piece of masking paper on it and then cut it so that it fits exactly in that hole right there. And that's all we have to do with our windshield. I did come in and I uh, put a little piece of tape in here where our hole for our wiper is. Yeah, I try to get some shade on you there. And I'm filling this in with some seam sealer. 
um, cause we're gonna glue that cowl top down. It's not gonna be operational. And I ran out of seam sealer, dang it. So that's why we're moving on to masking right now. <clears throat> so our masking machine back here, super simple operation. I'm just gonna go roughly the size we need. Bigger's better, the paper's not that expensive. Sometimes they can be a real fight to get them working good. It took a while to get this cheap sucker where it would lay that tape out on that paper and not mess up on you. And my thing is I wanna to try to keep this paper flat, like as few wrinkles as possible. Uh, the more wrinkles you have, the more spots you have to hide dirt and everything. And it's gonna end up masked up for a while before we start painting. So I wanna get, get it as smooth as we can where we can keep it as clean as we can. I gotta go get a razor blade though. You can't mask without a brand new razor blade or a break knife or something like that. Gotta have a sharp tool. All right, on these edges, we gotta go back and like when we jammed all this, we painted the edge. I've sanded all the outsides of everything, but I did not sand any of the edges while I was doing my rounds with the sandpaper. And so I've just got a little piece of some DA paper, some 500 grit here, and I'm going around and I'm hitting all those edges so our paint has something to stick to. So this edge of the door, when it's closed, the paint's gonna blow in there. It's not gonna leave a real bad tape line or not gonna have a tendency to, so it's the easy side of this to do. Inside of this jam, it's a little bit tougher because now the paint's gonna be blowing in here and it's gonna to wanna to build up and make a line. And you can see that's only about a quarter of an inch deep. So we're gonna to have to take and we're gonna to have to sand just over the edge and I'm gonna to have to set you guys down get in here and just like barely barely tape that or tape sand that yeah put some scratches in it that's what we're after here just enough that we know stuff's not going to chip out on that very edge and then that's really we're going to try to get that foam out as close as we can we'll probably end up maybe a, a eighth of an inch in there i'm going to jump down here, scuff around the rest of this, and then we'll show how to use this foam tape. All right, guys, so I have gone and scuffed all around these edges. And you can kind of see, maybe, the edge, now it's all dull. There's no shiny left. We got nice small scratches in there so that our paint's not gonna be as likely to chip on that edge. I say not as likely, cause it's still, if it gets bumped hard, it's gonna chip. We're just trying to do everything we can to get good adhesion so we don't have any issues there. All right, guys, so when we're putting this stuff in here, we just gotta kinda go around. I've already done most of the door opening here, but I wanted to show you in this, I needed to add a piece and you can't really tear that stuff. It just like jacks up majorly on you. So if you cut it with a razor blade, you get a pretty good square cut. And my piece that I'm gonna put on there, same deal, nice square cut. We're just gonna push it into itself and voila, there you go. Nothing real fancy. I wanna try to kind of keep it in the same spot in the jam where I'm sticking the rest of this. And then when I get down here to the bottom, I can't just turn. I've got to turn and I've got to twist this stuff too. And that gets the glue towards the back of that opening. I don't want the glue out where it's gonna create a tape line because it, it will, and it's a bad tape line. The whole purpose of using this stuff is to kind of get away from having those lines. So now that we have this on here, We'll come back and we put tape on that to make sure that it doesn't come off. 
It's really important as you put this on not to stretch it because if you stretch it, it will release by itself overnight. You got to make sure you just lay it in, do it three or four times, waste some, whatever you got to do. This is important if you're trying to get a nice looking uh, jam out of this or tape line in your jam. You can see we're just hard line right there. We could paint that that way. It'd be fine. It just have a really, really sharp paint line where we stop. And we want to try to do something not to have a terrible paint line. So we're painting from the very last thing that'll be on the car to the stuff that's going to be there while we're painting. We're going to end up masking back here. And this will be for applying base coat. And then we'll mask all the way up into this edge. And that'll be for applying sealer. So we'll get the sealer on the car. We'll take that tape off. Then we'll have this much room. And it'll only be base coat there. It helps with the overspray lines and stuff. And then we'll be able to come back in and uh, cut and buff this and leave the stuff on the motor in the front of the car. So I've just taken a little of that round material, put it in there. I'll probably come in and even do inside of here. So it's just a little at a time, we'll get it going. Masking, come on, what a pain in the butt. All you gotta do is cover it up to keep paint from getting on other stuff, right? Just throw it up there. Well, yeah, you could do that, but spots for dirt to hide and everything else. And then like this piece of masking paper that's hung upside down. Why would somebody do that? That looks like that's wasting time having to flip it around. But you wanna cut this off. I've already pre back taped that whole flange. So come in, touch that, try to keep it kind of straight as I'm going. Get a spot where you know there's going to be a kink, let it happen. Don't fight it, don't fight it. Just keep going. Kind of saw me pull the end and then sort this before I just stuck it all down and end up with a huge wrinkle I can't fix. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I like to do the bottom is now I've got a, a, a little line there that I can see. It's kind of weird, but where the tape isn't perfectly stuck, you can see a little black line. That's where I want to cut with my razor blade, because if I cut too deep, even like that, I'll cut through the tape or I'll ruin my paper. So, yeah, just do it real quick, run down through there. You get a feel for it after you do it a while. You can tell when you're about to screw up when it's time to do something different. You know, come on there, cut that piece out so you guys can see. That's what we'll end up with, is that nice masking job there, just like the windshield, just like the quarter glass. We got our foam in here, and the foam is, is cool, but we're gonna have to uh, not shut these doors 100% until right before we're ready to paint. And right now I'm not feeling super good, so I'm not even gonna contemplate painting this but I do feel good enough to spend 30, 40 minutes at a time out here slinging some mask and paper talking to a camera.
Well, all right, we got our back door masked up. You can see I'm just leaving a little bit of blue showing on the inside, hard taping that, that overspray will curl around. It'll make a little line there, but not bad. And up in here, we got that foam tape. Once the door hits it, it'll seal off against it, kind of help push it against the jam. Hopefully make some decent looking uh, lines there. I think I said this earlier, I've got to leave this stuff kind of uh, opened up until like the day I'm gonna paint it, I'm gonna have to go back and retouch all this foam because it keeps moving further away from where I've stuck it down. It's a, uh, I don't know. I wanted to use it and I did. I may not do it again. We'll see. I do things kind of just however they work out. I am gonna have to put me some filters in front of that because it blows into this building. And we still gotta cover everything up with plastic mask along the floor. Yeah, just what we gotta do, it's a big job. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. Quite a video, a lot of masking, a lot of stuff going on there. I'm going to finish up the, the rest of that job, and then the next time you see that car, hopefully we'll be mixing paint and cleaning stuff up, getting it ready to shoot. I was looking out here, and uh, man, quite a picture that's been painted for us this evening with these small clouds and the sun filtering up through them. Cows down here in the pond. Hopefully they don't get stuck. That always creates more issues. But if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. All those things would be awesome. And we'll catch you all on the next one.